What's up, guys? Welcome to RA Radio. I am Evan. And I'm Rome. And we are here with episode two. Briefly, before we get into our interview with Jay, we want to run you through a few announcements of what we got coming up. What do we got coming up, Rome? So, on December 14th, we have our ninth annual Misfit Toys Throwdown. So, the Misfit Toys Throwdown, um, we have three different divisions. We have a scale division, we have an RX division, we have a master's division. Um, if you have any questions on what division that you should be in, feel free to shoot me an email and ask me. Um, the big idea of this event is other than being a fitness competition, it's really a toy drive and a charity drive. So the toy drive, we donate those toys every year to a local food pantry. Every athlete has to bring a toy. Yes. Every athlete needs to bring a new unwrapped toy. You don't have to limit it to one. If you'd like to bring two, three toys, you can bring as many as you would like. And if you're a spectator, you can bring toys too. Absolutely. 100%. If you're a spectator, you want to bring toys in, or we're having Bear's Barbecue Truck come in, come eat some barbecue, donate a toy awesome i'm happy to have you um there's still time to sign up so if you want to sign up last minute get yourself in or if you'd like to volunteer for the day we can always use judges or just volunteers to help with the logistics of the day so misfit toys is coming december 14th beyond that quick run through of events january 18th will be our holiday party so get ready to have a good time that's going to be at the gym this year we'll probably get it catered and we'll have a bunch of good stuff going on with that the very next day, I believe this is the sixth annual Northeastern States Championship. That's a weightlifting meet. So what I mean by the Northeastern States is it's predominantly um, New York, New Jersey, Rhode Island, Massachusetts. We're not limiting it to New England. It's the Northeastern States. So if you don't know anything about weightlifting, but you want to see some people lift a bunch of weight with a snatch or clean and jerk, that's the day to come out. And then the last announcement, um, we haven't mentioned much about this yet, but there's going to be a sign-up sheet on the wall. It's going to be a hockey game. It is going to be the Springfield Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds at versus the Hartford Wolfpack. It's going to be on February 1st. We're going to get a big group together. If you came in the summer to the Hartford Yard Goats game, similar idea. We'll have a whole section to ourselves, and we'll have a great time. So hopefully I'll see you at all of the events. Let's get into the episode today with Jay Therian. you pronounce your last name, Jay? Uh, Therian, but you know, Therian. it's been butchered so many other I, ways. I think I've always said like Therian or something. Yeah. I probably I never, didn't even read You're such it, a right? nice guy. I've never actually corrected you because you're just such a great person. Oh, this is really us. kind of you. I'm like, you know, Rome, when he does it, I'm like, listen, asshole. I don't think I've Get ever called right. you. I've never called you by your whole name in real life, though, I think. I don't think you have. <laughs> there would be no so. good reason for me to. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I know that I did earlier, though, because Mandy was like, who are you guys interviewing today? And I was like, Jay. Th- 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 <laughs> that guy. Yeah, <laughs> that's usually how it ends. Actually, people are like, "How do I pronounce it?" Th- th-? I'm like that guy. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's, that's, you're perfect. I get that all the time, where people are like, "How do you pronounce your last name?" And I was like, "I'll take whatever you give me. It'll be Boussier, Bouncier, Borsier, whatever. I don't care. I'll yeah. respond to it." It all it all depends on how much culture the individual has, right? So it's, yeah, it's like Boussier. Or how much culture they that's, think I'm they like, have. That's a, that's a well-cultured brother right there. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's seen some shit. This yeah. looks like it would be French, so we're just going to go the French way with it. I can't hear you at all for some oh, reason. Oh, really? Oh, see, there it I is. I had a button on. That's my uh, fault. I was checking something. But, uh, yeah, so on the announcement side, I mean, I think the only other thing is the holiday party is going to be coming up. Yeah, I don't know after uh, this. set date. I know it's in January. I think okay. we set a date, but I'm not positive, so we'll okay. get back to everybody on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I think it was January 18th. Yeah, something like that. Does that sound familiar? Right around then. check my um, phone. It's like two weeks into January. Yeah, the holiday party, it's going to be at the gym. Uh, we'll get it catered. Uh, maybe if we can convince Jay and Scott and Dan to uh, do some barbecue stuff, maybe Ooh. that could be a cool addition if they're available mm. and willing and able. Um We'll see. This time it won't be a competition, though. It'll just be like, make some cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's always, everyone's invited. Food, booze, have a good time, hang out. Um, it's a good way to see everybody to wrap up the year. Pizza Saturday, strength. January 18th. Look 18th. at that. Wow. You didn't even see? know, and you knew. Boom. Right on top of Somewhere it. Somewhere in the back of my brain that came up. Man, there's like, I feel like there's so many rabbit holes that I want to go down now. So we, we briefly talked about, so the row was last night. Um, I was originally supposed to row, but recently got a cortisone shot in my elbow because of some weird stuff. And uh, Tim told me I'm not allowed to pull anything all week. So there was sort of a last minute call that I had to go from rowing to biking. Which, you know, whatever, I was okay with. And overall, it went well, felt fine. It's it's more just like a mental game than anything of like, how much are you willing to 
sit sort of on that threshold of like this is gonna hurt a bit the whole time it's not like the when i tested the six minute bike cow workout for misfit toys that's just like you're gonna hurt really bad for not that long and this is more like are you willing to hurt a, a like a moderate amount for over an hour a prolonged suffering yeah exactly prolonged of, uh, just pain and how good are you i think too at like riding that razor's edge of like if you go too hot too early you're gonna pay for it the rest of this time Absolutely. but if you go out slow i mean you don't really hurt yourself i feel like i probably skew towards slow at the beginning but you just end up sitting on it longer which ends up sucking too the but, real uh, question is did the christmas vacation movie make it better or worse. I don't know. I, that's something. It's funny because, like, I tend to be. I almost feel like, um, like when I do like long runs and stuff lately, I've stopped bringing like music or podcasts or anything, okay. and I'll just like run with just my Garmin on. And um, there's something about like you almost get meditated to the point that time just flies by. Really? And I think there was something about like watching a movie that made it feel longer. Sure. You were just very aware of like every moment that's going by. And where I feel like if I was just like sitting on the bike for an hour, it would just tick away. A little bit just kind of let your brain take you wherever it's going cool thing with that movie is jay actually ran into what chevy chase i did two recently, weeks ago yeah, three weeks recently ago. dude was catatonic oh yeah out of his freaking mind yeah i mean you know nice enough but medically um, or uh, for pleasure uh probably a mix of both yeah I mean, when you think about the toll it takes on the body and i've had some experience there in in traveling and and being not that i'm some mega superstar or anything but like it, the the shit that you have to go through and to medicate through like you think about the injuries you talked about yeah. getting a shot in your shoulder yeah um and you think about like okay if you're on the road and you're Chevy Chase and you're promoting the 30th anniversary I think it is this year of Christmas Vacation That's crazy. yeah so it was him and Beverly D'Angelo man to think about like you said you can't pull anything for a week I used to pull a lot of times around the week to thinking about her when I was younger <laughs> um but like like in time has not has been very kind to her but the 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 whole crew was there and they're doing this autograph and these photo sessions and I was like this is amazing. And I took my 12 year old daughter to, it was a comic convention and, um, and he was one of the featured guests or whatever. So they kind of usher you in, like you're waiting forever to see Chevy Chase and yeah. take a photo with him. And finally they usher us in. They're like, okay, don't touch him. And I was like, you don't like, touch why, him? like why? inappropriately. I wasn't planning on doing that. Like, so I, you know, we walk up and I was like, Hey, you know, huge fan. Great to meet you. Um, and he kind of like, his head didn't move. It, which when you're listening to this, like you just have to kind of visualize it, but his eyes moved. So he was kind of like, like Is staring like off to the side and like, then looked at my kid, like on the other side and then looked back at me. And I was like, Oh my God, homeboy's trapped in his body. Yeah. It's yeah. Crazy. Like, this is crazy. Yikes. And then he kind of like, like cracked a smirk and they took the photo. And I remember you get the digital version of it. I texted it to my wife and she was like, he looks miserable. He probably is. And yeah. I was like, he is miserable. Absolutely. You know, like they're just, there's just seas of people that are, that are being, you know, kind of ushered into yeah. the photo. So, but that is like sacred ground content to me. That yeah. movie. So if I was here this morning, watch, I probably wouldn't have gotten through the row <laughs> or the bike because I would have like stopped laughing my ass off watching the movie. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of lost track of everything. So there is some amazing one liners in that movie. Dude, Even that... I came in early today and I sat there and watched it for part of the time. I was like, Oh, I'm supposed to be productive right now. Like, yeah. I should not be watching this. Right. That movie is crazy too. It's one of those, like, I think I, I mean, we watched it last year, but I didn't really watch it last year. Um, and I paid attention more this year and it's like, it's just such a, uh, crazy thing. I love that style of like, it's got so much buck wild stuff that they just sort of play normal in it, you know? And it's yeah. like, it's this funny era of filmmaking that in some ways I feel like people don't tend to do that as much anymore sure. of it's either like, I don't even know what like the big comedy movies are, but I feel like those like great comedy movies that can pull off like that balance of trying to be serious and being funny. And like, they're not, you know, they're not really slapstick about it in the way they're delivering it, but it is a little bit slapstick. Oh, like I feel like movies like that don't get made as much anymore. They don't. And when you think about like, um, not to go too far down that rabbit hole, but, there's a great documentary about the whole vacation series. Mm. I don't remember exactly where it was, but I'm sure you can find it on YouTube or whatever. And they talk about the comedic genius of the improv. Sure. Like, so there was a script and, and they all had their, their points, but then they would let Chevy Chase kind of go off the script. And then Randy Quaid, who plays uh, cousin Eddie, like mm -hmm. the, yep. the seminal character of that, of the, especially the vacation, the Christmas vacation movie. Like he had about 75% of that script memorized. And then the rest of it was him just being like completely Free insane. Living. And now all those ideas and all those things are just being rehashed. And I feel like it's almost like the quick cash grab 
right? Yeah. Like everything's being remade or repurposed. Yep. We're going to do round two. We're going to do round two or we're going to, you know, if they ever try to remake Christmas Vacation, I don't even know what I would do with myself. Like, who would play it? A, like who would even be in there? Who could play that? They're just going to put The Rock in. You know? yeah. The Rock yeah, is just yeah, popular. The, the, yeah. the Rock will be in there. The Rock and Kevin Hart. The rock and Danny DeVito. Hart. Put those three back together from the Giamangi movies and you're good. And yeah. you know what? It'll be freaking hilarious. <laughs> it, would, it would be hilarious. It would be a funny so. movie. But, uh, but yeah, like that just doesn't happen anymore to your point. Like that slapstick humor and it's it's wholesome to an extent, you know, some of those things are kind of taboo with, you know, yeah. some of the, but for oh, the absolutely. most part there, you know, when you go back and watch this over and over again too, like I pick up on things where I'm like, did he really have a poster of two turtles having sex behind his head? So like there's, there's random stuff that yeah. when you watch it for the 900th time. Mm -hmm. You see something new every time. Yep. Yeah. And I yeah, just feel right. like when you go to see something nowadays, that just doesn't happen. Yeah, it's, it's like all 90 minutes of numbing mind, you know, just mindless content, snack on your popcorn and get out of the theater. I agree. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the, uh, the comedies I'm watching, I'm going back and watching are like the similar to that, but like grandma's boy or mm. like the, the Adam Sandler type comedy where it has mm. a lot of that still hitting in there where you're like, Whoa, what is that? Where's that coming from? Back when Adam Sandler was funny. Yes. Yeah. Before he tried to be serious and do <laughs> all the real things. But, um, to get into, I guess, um, the podcast of fitness. Um, Jay, you started training here, well, like nine years ago mm. and then took like an eight year, seven and a half year break. Yeah. And then came back about what, a year, year and a half ago? Uh, about a year ago. It was about a year, a year ago. ago this time. Maybe a little over you said a year last ago. December you had hernia surgery and we started training, what, a month, two months before that. <sighs> yeah. I saw you in, um, yeah, I saw you at Pearl Jam actually. Yes. So we, uh, we met that up, September? what was that? September. Yeah. Somewhere around there. So we were mm. up at uh, Pearl Jam. I was actually rocking Wade's army uniform and you were like, Hey, what's that about? Yeah, is that exactly. Weezer? What is that? And I was like, not Weezer still equally as cool though. Actually, um, I would argue more cool, but yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. More cool than Weezer. Um, jammed about that a little bit. I saw like two days later, your donation came through to Wade's army through us, ordered a couple shirts. And like two days later you stopped and it was like, let's get it on. Let's that's, get this fitness going. Again. That's that's in the business world. We call that a warm lead. Right? <laughs> um, but that uh, was a warm lead. It was, it was a warm lead, but yeah, that, that so my I don't know how far back into the and I don't know how interesting this will be. So I guess we'll find out. I haven't yeah. been editing you know, three quarters of what I'm about to say. But <laughs> you know, as a as a kid, I was always very active and and played football and baseball and, and was very competitive. But also had that nerdy brain too, which I still sure. have never grown out of. Right, so I would play video games and kind of go off into a deep dark hole somewhere and come out five days later. Absolutely. And, um, and then getting into college, trying to like walk on and play football and then realizing that the guys who went to university of Connecticut to play football were the guys who weren't just good enough to play at Florida or Ohio state or one of those that could uproot a tree from a standstill. <laughs> a couple of those guys I think work out here now, but, um, <laughs> the, I remember just getting my ass kicked and I was like, well, this isn't going to work and, and doubled down in the music career sure. and the production side of that. And then over the years, just got lazy and and got fat and, and drank and ate on expense accounts and whatever. And then sure. um, probably right before I started working out here nine or so years ago, when my daughter was a couple of years old, my oldest now, uh, I was like, I got to get my shit together. Sure. And did Weight Watchers, lost a bunch of weight, but didn't learn anything. So I was like, I knew that a chicken nugget was one point. I knew that a piece of pizza was 10 points. <laughs> and I don't know what's in it, but, but it I don't counts know as a point. In it, and I don't know how it works with the rest of my body and how it's going to fuel my ability to perform and whatever. So I lost a, a buttload of weight, but then had like no habits. Like I, sure. I felt good because I lost a lot of weight, but I didn't feel good because I didn't have any freaking energy because I just wasn't really eating. I wasn't eating yeah. the right way and I wasn't exercising. And then I felt good, great working out here and- and then I took a job where I was traveling constantly and I was like, ah, I'm going to put my membership on hold, yep. brr, you know, for an eight year hold. <laughs> and, uh, eight years later, we're eight back years later, it. eight years later, you know, I had gained a majority of that weight back and in my anxiety and my stress and just like everything about my life was just in, just in the shit, you know, for, for lack of a better term. And it's, it's kind of ironic in the sense that like one of the triggers was four years ago to this day that we're recording this podcast, my mother passed away at the age of 63 from a heart attack. Yeah. Her mother died at the age of 63 with a heart attack. Um, and so I, I've got some genetics that are sure. kind of against me. Right. But, um, you know, my mother, God rest her soul, we didn't really take it seriously. She didn't take okay. care of herself. She didn't exercise. She was overweight. She didn't pay attention to what she ate. She had diabetes, whatever. So that was like a wake up call. And then I went into this couple of years of like, what the hell am I doing? Sure. I have three kids. I have a wife. I have a great career. I've got some cool friends. Yep. 
and I am killing myself. And when I saw you at Pearl Jam, the, the irony was I'm sitting there. I'm like, I should be enjoying myself. This is one of my favorite bands. I'm like kind of, I'm like a ball of stress and yeah. nerves and I'm not enjoying this. And then you come walking in with a Wade's army shirt. I'm like, Hey, what's up, dude? Hey, what's that? You know? And, and I, it clicked in my head. I'm like the best I felt in the last 10 years was when I was part of a community of people sure. who were focusing on the same things. And lo and behold, a year plus later, save for surgery and yep. some injuries along the way, um, I'm, I'm here and I'm feeling you know better than I have in I don't even know how long. And you're killing it. I remember at that concert because we were there and obviously um, we, we were sitting in a, a nicer section of the, the stadium where drinks and food is on the house. I'll brag you were about like, it. What's that? Brag about it. I, all I was saying is <laughs> we, were, we were rolling VIP. Bro. Nice. We, we had some great tickets, right? <laughs> but... Um, Jay wasn't drinking and he wasn't like eating food. And I was like, what the hell's going on, dude? This like, guy broke. We're at a pro yeah. Sam concert and you're not going to drink anything. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, Nope. I'm watching all this stuff. And I was like, well, that's awesome. But you should be able to celebrate while you're here too. Um, things I'm interested in Jay. Um, you spent a lot of your life on the road. Now you're on the road traveling for business. Yeah. Previously you were on the road traveling yeah. for music and doing mm -hmm. things like that. And you were saying how you can relate to Chevy chase. How did all the time previously currently, affect your health in terms of like hotels, dining, oh, eating out expense accounts. Oh, I mean, previous yeah. in a previous life, you're on a tour bus, you're doing stuff like that. How, how was that? Yeah. So like, so uh, without going too far into the realm of making excuses, cause I hate sure. that. Right. Yeah. Like, but it's, it's tough when you're on the road and you think about um, when I was on tour buses and kind of traveling around, everything was catered and taken care of. And I was also younger, right? Sure. So like when I think about even some, of the, even some of the conversations we have, I'm like, man, if I was still, man, 15 years ago, <laughs> if I did this, like, holy crap, I would this would be a game it. changer. I'd be killing it, bro. Um, but back then I didn't have to pay as much attention to it, right? Sure. You know, yeah. so metabolism and whatever else. And then we were traveling with famous people sure. who ate well. Okay. So it limited your ability to screw yourself, right? It, to an extent. So that's right? interesting. So, so the food they fed you was the same as, so everybody ate the same. Yeah, thing. we didn't eat a, like a trough it, while they were eating off of plates or anything. Yeah, yeah I didn't know. Like, you know, how they, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I they know, set you up with, with you. like a buffet of food and be like, you guys eat here, we're going to the green room and we're going to eat steaks and whatever. Okay, real quick, real quick. I feel like you have to explain what you did because we're, we're talking very vaguely <laughs> yes, about tour buses and famous people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when I was in college, uh, so even prior to college, when I was like 15, 14, I think I got my first guitar when I was like 12. Guitar and a leather jacket. It was the coolest fucking Christmas ever, right? <laughs> Dude, like, the ultimate like pairing. My, my, my parents crushed it on that one. And, um, you know, became a musician, learned how to play bass, guitar, and uh, bass and guitar, and, and sing a little bit and whatnot. And then I was probably 14 or 15, and I started playing in bands, punk rock bands, hardcore bands, you name it. And then I started playing in bands with guys who were old enough to play at bars. And, and then it was shit. like, they were like, Hey dude, you don't even have your license, but you're going to drive in. So they don't question you and be like, Oh, he left his license in the trunk, you know, <laughs> whatever kind of thing. So they're like sneaking me into bars and shit. And, um, when I had a little bit of success in that and, and had a band at the time that, uh, had a record contract and would go out and tour and, and had some fun with that. I then got into deeply into the world of production, right? So okay. Evan, you can relate to this. I mean, with all the amazing stuff you do, n not the least of which is setting up a podcast <laughs> in the middle of a freaking PT session lab here in, at the gym, um, is uh, really just kind of doubled down on the production side of stuff. So, you know, everything from uh, Runner, which is basically like, hey, you know, Eddie Van Halen wants green M&Ms and black pantyhose, kid, go, go to Walmart and get that stuff. To like, okay, we have a stage plot for, you know, X number of pyrotechnics sure. with lights and with this in terms of that for, for equipment. And uh, it was really a, an eye opener for me because it actually turned me on to this whole adult learning and cognitive recognition stuff. I know yeah. I roll in, my boss was a huge promoter and he's like, hey dude, when we get to Detroit, you got to teach the local Michigan crew how to run our show. And I was like, how the hell do I teach people how to do stuff? Like, sure. this doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. I play music. Why play, are you asking me to do this? I play music and smoke pot, dude. Like <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a cruel profession. Like now I got to teach people how to do that. I was sure. like, oh, so you roll joint. No. Um, so <laughs> it, it, it kind of morphed into, you know, when I wasn't playing, I was touring and doing pr promotions. So when I say I was on tour buses and you're eating really well, when you're on the road with somebody like James Taylor, he takes his health seriously. Like sure. he drinks wine, but he eats like salads and grilled chicken and like vegetables. And like when you're on the road with Snoop Dogg, 
uh, one of the funniest things ever was like, you know, Hey, all the stereotypes you probably have heard are legit. <laughs> so, so like, you're going to eat the way we eat. You're sure. gonna, and I was like, all right, cool. You know, so but, we're eating fried chicken or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, collard green and like the stuff that they rap about, you know, you're like, oh, how much of this is fake? So on the buffet, they have like a thing of blunts where they're like, Hey, mm. take one of these on your way. Yeah, so, and- the, <laughs> so the only thing that was structured about that, there was a, a package store called the smoke and groove. So it was Snoop Dogg, Parliament Funkadelic. Okay. The Fugees. Okay. Cool. Um, the only thing structured about the quote unquote meals was legit like the drugs. It was like <laughs> plates of blunts and whatever laying around. Everything else was kind of like we need to have this much of this and this much of that. Oh, it was it was insane. But um, so that stuff was really cool. But it was it was hard to blow yourself up because you have professional chefs that are on the road. So That's even awesome. if you don't want, I'm like I don't need fucking collard greens again. Like sure. They're like what do you want? I'm like I don't know something green that will help me. You know, and their yeah. job, much like a trainer or a coach. Um, is to fuel your ability to then get through the rest of that day. Yeah, right? I mean, those, in, in, the tours to, sound like they're pretty grueling to begin with for everybody involved. Set up, break down, people performing. Oh, I mean, it's unbelievable. Balls out 100% of the time. It's, unbe- it, it's, it's crazy. So you, you have those folks. So you have this, and that's what I think most people, next time you go to a concert, right? Yep. You're like you guys will probably pay more attention to this and you may get into it too because you're kind of a gearhead when it comes to like, how do you, how do you bring things alive? Yeah. Um, but, uh, like I go to concerts and my wife busts my balls all the time. And I'm like, I can't believe they're using SM 57s on the drum kit. She's like, you're the only asshole in a room of 12,000 people that is like complaining about that. I'm like, I'm not the only one, but there's a small percentage of us. Like, what'd you just say? An SM 57? I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what that is. I'm, I'm a unidirectional mic. But, um, the, the, my point in that rant is that there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. Sure. Yeah. So the professional, you know, there's there's fitness folks that are there, like trainers and whatnot that okay. are working with these artists. There are professional chefs. There are life coaches. I mean, you can. That was going to lead into my next shit. question of that of like, so you're on the road with these big people and they're watching what you eat. Was your fit? Were you involved with fitness at any point? Because you were playing football younger. You're going to college. You're still banging weights. You're doing whatever. You get out on the road. Is fitness put to the wayside, or is it still like, hey, I'm eating well? Is there an opportunity to lift weights, or you're like, fuck that noise? I'm going to drink some beers and have a good time. It's, uh, a little bit of both. So the the form the formal like, okay, I'm going to go work out. Like yep. t- like t- typical today. week. I'm like today. Like I'm like, yo, I'm going to come in. We're going to smash it. Yep. I'll we'll stick around. We'll record this podcast. Um, and I would structure out my weeks like we do. I'd never did that. Okay. So it was like, okay, if we have an off day or if the equipment was set up and I had 20 minutes to myself. Now think about when you're working in that line of work, you're busy when the artists are not busy. Sure. Right. So yep. like when they're working out, I'm, I'm technically working out because I'm like sure. trying to get a thousand pound truss to yeah. you know move Figure around or whatever. So slamming road cases, slamming cases around, pushing you know hundreds and thousands of pounds worth of gear around. So technically, I did work out every day. Sure. So you were really active. Was very as active. You said, like staying in shape. I mean, losing weight, gaining weight, super easy equation. The law of thermodynamics. You're at a caloric deficit every day. Sure. You're eating well. You're super active. You're losing weight. Sure. So so that you know the activity level was super high. Okay. Um. And, and I would work out when I could, you know, cause it was one of those things where I'm like, I feel like a sloth. You sure. know, I haven't worked out in a week or whatever, but for the most part it was functional. Okay. Yeah. You know, throughout the course of the yeah. day. I mean, your, your duty was to move. You're, You're moving all day. Duty. <laughs> <laughs> How um, old are you during all this? Uh, early twenties. Okay. So, you know, actually left college initially cause I had the opportunity to either make money or like rack up a shitload of debt. Yeah. Sure. Spend more money like, you don't hmm, have. Let's see. Um, which, you know, then forced me to go back and finish and do other things. Yeah. And then I mean, from everything you said, back. you're super well educated now. So clearly you've continued your education. Well, you know, depends on your, your barometer of super educated. Hey, you know, you're just talking to a meathead <laughs> that likes to lift weights. So that is what it is. But, but it forces you to look at things differently. And in those experiences, you know, I get the, the question all the time is like, how come you gave that up? Well, sure. it's a 168 hour a week job. Do the math. And, yeah. You know, so you're constantly on. And back then you're, you could wake up and you're in Arizona and you live in Connecticut and you haven't talked to your parents. You know, the cell phones were garbage back then. Yeah, absolutely. Know? Um, so that was, that was a challenge. And quite honestly, if I still did that, I'd be dead. Yeah. You know, there's guys I know, I, there are fewer and fewer people I know that are on tours to get those perks. Yeah. You know, my kids would be like, Hey dad, you know, anybody on, you know, the Taylor Swift? Tour? I'm like, no, you know, cause most of the guys that dad ran with are friggin' out of the business for one, either by yep. their own accord or due to some sort of health issue or whatever. Or they're but, dead. Um, yeah. 
But, you know, so there's an interesting potential uh, revenue stream here that literally is just popping in my brain as we talk about this. If you were able to get in and coach like these road dogs on yeah. the proper techniques for taking care of their bodies. Sure. Yeah. Cause I think of the guys that are like, yo, I threw my back out. So I'm off the road for nine months. I don't know how I'm going to eat. You're yeah. Like, uh, you threw your back out because you were doing stuff you shouldn't have been doing, or you didn't have the right level of function or form and fitness around it. So yeah. be a fascinating, maybe that's a, that's a non, we should talk about we that. Talk I know, that. um, I know one guy I'm not, I can't say I'm friends with him or acquaintances, but I know of him. I've seen him speak. Um, his name's Derek Woodski. He tours with the Zach Brown band and does yeah. exactly that. He goes with them and teaches them how to stay fit, Zach healthy, Brown move just well. Wore a squat tober t-shirt and yeah, his, uh, and that's yeah, where, kept, that's where that's all comes full circle of. Um, and I mean that dude was a Canadian national champ and Olympian, all that kind of stuff. But I would definitely be more than down to have that conversation. Well, and I think you know there's a lot of that that goes on now. With um, I even think back to like the Rolling Stones and those guys back in the day. They would have one of the funny stories, like they had a snooker table. I was like, what the hell is snooker? Sure, it's basically like a gigantic pool table with no pockets. Game makes no sense. To sure, me. We so ordered, a lot of cocaine's involved. Yeah, <laughs> we, it, pretty much. I don't know what else was done on that table, but the game of snooker was hardly ever played on some of those tours. But um, but Mick Jagger used to have a coach, like a fitness coach, a sure. trainer, and he would just run. Okay. Like he, they would have treadmills set up backstage and he would just run his ass off. But you think about if you've ever seen them perform yeah. live, he's dancing, running around, uh, you know, for two and a half hours. Yeah. And you're like, how does a guy in his fifties or sixties do that? Sure. Cause homeboy runs a freaking half marathon I just every was day. I assuming it was the cocaine. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, you <laughs> there's know, that as there's well. Probably <laughs> that as well. But, well, and so. you're, and you're just moving on stage a ton too. I mean, it's like a, it's like a two hour aerobic Zumba class every night for those guys yeah. a lot of the times. But it's interesting to what you were saying about just like sort of functional movement for people working. Like there's a lot of big, um, conversations with that actually in like the film world and stuff too with like camera operators and sure. stuff yeah what you're doing with all that stuff on you all the time yeah i mean and and the way that i do it i think leads you a little less susceptible to that but like some like feature operators you spend a lot of time with like cameras on their shoulders and so you're sort of like asymmetrically loaded with like 30 to 50 pounds consistently yeah. and trying to like walk around and move with that and people end up with like slip discs and all this sure. other crazy stuff so there's like hardware coming out to fix that but then also i think you know it's part of for me where like people ask me like how fitness helps my work and i just like feel better i don't know that it's like i would probably still destroy myself if i did that every day for a long time but like for the times that it comes up i feel like being more structurally you know able to support things yeah. and stuff like i just don't get beat up by that stuff as much which is nice but uh but yeah so it's just funny that you guys are talking it sounds about that like you mean you yourself have long days like when you're talking about when you're on set and you're filming for 12 hours where you're talking about the crossfit games you're out there filming all day yeah. in the sun in the heat where you're like that's a legit workout, man. Like, yeah, I was averaging. No I think my my watch said that I was getting like 15 miles of walking a day, and most of it was with a, a 30 load. pound camera kit. Yeah, yeah. so just it just beat you up. And, Carrying uh, a weight vest, yeah, yeah, exactly. Throw a weight vest on, walk 15 miles a day, and see how you feel. Yeah, that's what, we should do that. So you no. should get 35 pound <laughs> weighted vests. You'll call the workout the Evan, and you just walk for 15 miles 15 around miles. the building. Oh. That'll be my signature. That'll be your signature. You have to. Uh, do it inside watching fit fitness as well, like he did at the game. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, watching watch people the work game. out the whole time. Just like put it like a camera on the front, like <laughs> exactly. an iPad on the front of the vest, and you have to watch it. We're gonna get some great footage. You know, but so the interesting thing. So I'm not carrying. Well, I'm carrying a lot weight, a lot less weight now, thanks to you. And but like I'm not carrying around weighted vests or those sorts of things. But even yesterday is a perfect example. Like brutal day, get on a train, stupid early, walk around Manhattan, to go to some meetings, take the train back, like 14 hour day. I've noticed a massive difference, even in just the function and the energy level of being able to do that. Like sure. there's times where I'm like, yo, get me on the train. Somebody carry me to the train because I have no energy left yep. to getting on there and being like, I'm good to go. Like, I don't even need awesome. to take a nap. Like yeah. I can get, you know, like <laughs> I should take a nap. Absolutely. But, uh, and naps but, are a good thing for everybody. Yeah. Like naps are good for you. I napped after the bike this morning. I went home <laughs> and passed right back out. <laughs> I just drank a lot of As coffee. You okay. As you you also didn't bike. I but. did not. But I was up early. <laughs> I was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, well, and I think that's something too that's like, I feel like I can feel that. That's like, I, I never quite know how to quantify it, but I would, the only way I could describe it is that it has to be some sort of just like that um, sort of like metabolic efficiency coming into play in general. That's like, there's there's a lot less downtime for me in a given day where like a lot of times, you know, we're like banging out a commercial and it's like, you know, we do a few takes and then we're going to flip something and it's like people want to like take cameras from you and, you know, sort of like give you a breather while you figure out the next thing. I'm like, let's just go. 
out. Like yeah. I'm good, you know? And I think yeah. there's some of that just like the, uh, the, the on a cellular level everything is just better at like keeping that energy storage yeah. up like keeping your um fat and ac- oxygen metabolizing well enough that you're not like having to really get run down and sit down and let yourself catch up because you're just on top of it all the time which is great and which is cool for both of you guys with both examples you're using it's also a lot of the knowledge that you've gained about how to fuel yourself properly yeah we're not like i'm gonna have a chicken nugget and a piece of pizza i'll be good right and you're well, like no well, and it, goes back, it goes back to your original question that I think you asked about four and a half hours ago um, <laughs> was, you know, the, the being on the road. And, and so being on the road, you know, back in the day, you had professional chefs and whatever sure. else, right? For most of the tours. Yep, Some of them were like total garbage and you're eating Taco Bell and ramen noodles. Absolutely. Or whatever. But, um, and when I was out with my own band, we were doing none of that stuff, right? <laughs> so, but uh, being on the road as a professional now in, in the kind of doing what I do and being on the road so much, you do, you have an expense account. You're taking yeah. folks to like Ruth's Chris Steakhouse and like all these crazy places. And it's what it's taught me to do because I don't have, I have professional chefs, but the professional chefs now are in the kitchen at these establishments we go to yeah. and their primary goal is to make tasty, delicious stuff that cost you an arm and a leg and, and then the push and put and all the truffle else. oil and push all the cake and whatever else at you. And I got really complacent in like, well, I'm eating high quality food. Yeah. So why wouldn't I eat the $65 steak? Absolutely. You know, so I, I do the old 96er and I eat every, you know, ish piece on the, on the plate because I want the t-shirt or whatever. But, <laughs> and so what it's taught me to do now is really to take a look at it throughout the day of like, okay, what do I need? you know, for the, for the beginning part of my day up through this point, And then kind of where are my potential landmines, right? So like, what's going to really screw me up? Cause to sure. your point, movement and the caloric deficit is really my best friend right now because I'm trying to continue to lose weight and, and understanding kind of, it's been a, it's been a fun, like the fitness challenge we did or the cut the junk challenge, I should say. Right. Um, which I, what did I finish? Third? Yeah, you were right in the running. Fucking right. I was on the podium, but I wasn't you quite were. at the time. You didn't get the sneakers. I didn't get the sneakers, but that's all right. I'm going to put, I'm gonna put the sticker on the side of these Metcons, and I'm going to be I like, I just hey, ordered Ashley, them the other day. This. So I can, really? I can send them over to you if you want, if you want to order them yourself. Oh, that would be hilarious. <laughs> I should. I should order them. I um, bought these myself. <laughs> I bought these myself. I came this close. The poor girl who actually won is like, why does everyone have the same shoes as me? <laughs> <laughs> like, they're super cool. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, the, so the thing with that, which again was super helpful because unlike Weight Watchers where it was like, okay, this is point based in terms of like, this is that point. It, what it taught me was, okay, here's the shit that's going to screw you up. Yep. So, and, and without it, and this was the, my favorite like advice from you during this competition, you're like, okay. follow it as diligently as you can without being weird. Yes. So there were times where I was like, you know, I was at, at the comic con, for example, I was there with one of my best friends and his kid. And we're like, we just, we'd walked, you know, freaking 20,000 steps. Sure. My knee was still blown up from trying to be sure, dragging you know, one leg, behind dragging you. one leg behind <laughs> me after you know, like trying to play a young man's game in squat Tober. And, and then I'm like, you know, he's like, let's get a beer. And I was like, ah, oh, it's fucking two points. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know what though? Like, don't be weird. Yeah. I was like, you know what, man? Yeah, let's have a beer. Like, let's yep. celebrate. I'll have one with you because I'm not really drinking, but I'll have one. Be- like, had a beer. I was like, all right, well, that's a deduction, but it's a but, deduction. So what? Yeah, I still got my a- movement in. I ate great throughout yeah. that whole day. I ate great at that meal. And I was like, okay. What it also helped me do was look at, like, should I get the burger? And I was like, no, I'm going to get the salad with no dressing and the sure. grilled chicken because I'm going to pound the extra 250 calories of this in this beer. Yeah. yeah. Right? So it taught me ways to look at it differently sure. instead of like, oh, crap. Well, I know if I if I have 15 points left, I can eat. Oh, he would have to pizza. Yeah. It's right. like I didn't need two slices of pizza at ten o'clock on a yep. Friday night. And that's cool because you were able to, in addition to what you got out of that meal, you got to have a beer with one of your good friends and exactly. celebrate the day, which yeah. is exactly. more important than two points. Exactly. Yeah, and you're making you're making sustainable progress. You're like you're learning how to think about things and maybe some days you come out like you net extra ahead and some days maybe you're a little over where you were targeting to be. But like at the end of the day, I think that's been a a big thing for me too, is just like really looking at it as a longer game and like a game of averages. And so it's sort of like, like the other day we were, um, 
filming this music video and like the decision, which totally makes sense was to like order pizza for everyone. And I was like, I don't really want to slam pizza right now. But like at the end of the day to what you're saying too, it's like, it's not going to blow my week up. Like I've been operating for the last few hours, like it's fine. And, uh, you know, ended up being able to make some conscious decisions the next day to sort of like balance it out. And I, you know, the number of times that those things throw you off if you're able to just sort of like play the game of averages versus I feel like the times that it's been like in the past, like, Oh, I'm, I like ate a pint of ice cream, stepped on the scale and I was a pound up the next day. And now I'm just like going to give up on all of this, yeah. you know? And then you're yeah. like way off the rails and you're like, now yeah. the whole weekend, I'm just going to pull the plug on it and, you know, we'll try and catch up with it in a week. And now you're back to where you started. And so I feel like sometimes those like micro decisions of like, yeah, maybe it's 200 calories here or whatever else. Like I've even been playing that game with myself a little bit today, just because of the, like my garments, like you burned 1100 calories this morning. And I'm like, I probably shouldn't eat my normal, calorie load today because i'm probably going to be like hurting tomorrow sure but like how much of that like 1100 calories do i want to blow yeah. um but yeah so i don't know i totally empathize with that like feeling that out and, and not being weird you know like you want to do the thing that's the most sustainable and i was even talking to someone recently about that where i was like that's the biggest reason for me personally that like i don't want to do like keto or vegan or anything else it's just like i there are like compelling arguments for any you know given thing but like i just want to do the thing that i don't have to think about that much and like when i did keto for a month it was the most like inconvenient way to have to live my life like when you're traveling and stuff and it's like oh i gotta find no carb options everywhere and you know all these various yeah. things and so for me personally you know like people ask all the time they're like oh do you avoid carbs i'm like i eat a lot of carbs and I move a lot and I lose weight. Like Absolutely. I just do a sustainable balance thing and like every day, you know, chip away and I'm not dropping, you know, 20 pounds a month. But in uh, November, I think I'm down eight from where I started the month. So it's like, that's it still, still that's works. Awesome. That's, that's awesome. I think a big thing you guys will see coming up soon. You're both kind of touching on it. Um, it's called metabolic flexibility. Mm. And they're saying that people that are generally the healthiest have the largest degree of metabolic flexibility where you can eat almost any food. And it doesn't blow you up. Yeah. Where you're like, mm, if I eat that, I'm going to be in the bathroom all night. Yeah. Typically, the healthiest <laughs> people out there are the most metabolically flexible across the board. Where you're like, hey, you're vegan and you're making me dinner. I can eat your food. That's why I hey, do well you're at the beer awesome mile. At, there you go. Or you're <laughs> awesome at barbecue and you're making me ribs. <laughs> I can crush ribs. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of being able to play on all of those fronts and speaking to that. But um, I think that's awesome. And yeah. It's, it's mitigating that risk too, right? So what I've, and again, what works for me doesn't necessarily work for everybody else. I mean, it not work for the two of you either, but like, is if I can mitigate the risk and if, if I have those options to your point, Evan, of like, well, you know, what, how many calories should I eat today? And should I stay on this or should I do that? Should I do it? Like tomorrow's Thanksgiving for Christ's yes. sake. Right? Yeah. It's totally. like eat. Right. But I'm going to surround myself because we are hosting Thanksgiving and the sides and everything else we're making, I'm making out of real food. Right. Right. So even if I crush the crap yep. out of some of those you sides, slam it's green root beans. vegetables, <laughs> yeah. green beans, you know, like this awesome butternut squash thing. Like it, there, there is limited, I could, it would take, I, I would probably literally explode if I tried to do the kind of damage I used to do back in the day, yeah. caloric wise, based on the actual food that's being produced. Like if you, you f surround yourself with quality foods, yep. to your point, like you make this joke all the time, you probably say it to everybody else, you're like, nobody got fat from eating the extra apple. It's <laughs> yeah. like, so what did I do? I went home and I got rid of all the shit yep. that I didn't want to put in my mouth. And uh, food wise, and then, and, and got like a bunch of produce and, you know, vegetables and fruits and whatever. And I'm like, you know, and I have a buddy who's like, oh, you know, if you put that banana in your smoothie, if you liquefy it, it's more, I'm like, dude, shut yeah, up. Absolutely. Yeah. Like just stop. Like, great. This is the same guy who's like religiously trying to do keto. Sure. And he comes over one day and he's like, yeah, you know, I uh, got keto ice cream. I'm like, wait a second, time out. Yeah. Are you supposed to be eating ice cream at all if you're that diet conscious? He's like, yeah, man, it's keto friendly. So then he gives it to me. I take a bite of it. And he's like, you want any more keto ice cream? I'm like, yeah. When you figure out what else is supposed to be in it, because this doesn't taste like yeah, ice cream. It tastes yeah. like ass. It tastes like total ass. I'm like, why are you doing this to yourself, yeah. man? If you really, like, grab an apple from behind you. Don't bring in this. I was like, and by the way, don't ever bring this back in my house. <laughs> but, Some people need that extreme, though. I mean, I, so I guess it kind of layers into the next topic of what you do, because you and I, what we do are pretty similar. We're both coaches. Sure. Um, you're 
you're a coach to big, big businesses and high power people. And I'm, I'm a coach to some high powered people, but I'm a coach across the board for fitness, wellness, sure. all that kind of stuff. I'm high power in a short time domain on a bike. Maybe there we not go. You proved that today. <laughs> high <laughs> wattage, high wattage. Well, so real quick, before we go down this rabbit hole, uh, w- what was sort of the like pull the plug moment for you on the music thing? So I still, I still write, still perform. Um, what got me out of the, the production side of it was, um, I worked for, oh God, I don't even remember how many times we were bought out, but I worked for a local promoter in Connecticut that then was part of Dells and Slater Enterprises that then became SFX and I got bought out by Clear Channel ultimately. So Clear Channel owns Comcast and all that yeah. for the folks that are listening that don't know. So they got bought by this monolithic, massive company, right? Sure. And, um, I was really at the point where I was starting to feel really just shitty. Like I, my energy was terrible. My fitness was going down the toilet. I hadn't seen any of my friends, whatever. And I was like, you know what? There's this guy coming in from Red Rocks, which is a famous venue. Yep. Wanted my job. I was based out of Hartford at the, I think it's called the Xfinity Center now. It used to be the sure. Comcast. Um, no, the Meadows? The Meadows. Thank yeah. you. Jesus, I'm going way, we're going way back. That's like 20 <laughs> something years at this point. Almost 25 years, I think. It was like 94, Yeah, I don't know what it was. I don't even remember. But anyway. I remember that. Yeah, it, it's crazy. So, and I was like, you know what? And my boss is like, hey, you know, this is how we're going to. I'm like, you know what? I'm done. Sure. I was like, I'm out. Uh, let this guy take my job. I need to spend more time at home. I need to like get my life together. Cool. I don't want to die on a fucking tour bus. Yeah. Um, and at that point, like my, my bands were not kind of doing what, you know, they originally had done. And yeah. I had this other band that was like, Oh, we're going to sign this record deal and maybe we'll go on tour or whatever. And I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to kind of double down on the, on the actual like performance component of it. And then try to find a real job that keeps me home more often. Okay. And at this point in your life, were you married? Did you have any kids? I was not. I was not married. I didn't have any kids. I Did didn't you have know any your real, wife? I didn't know my wife at all. Okay. Um, that's a funny story. And if she <laughs> listens to this podcast, she will punch me right in the balls. But, um, you know, but there's, I met her through music oh, and cool. through my ability to perform music, which, so I guess the, the, the pull the plug moment was like, I'm going to freaking die on a tour bus if I don't get the hell out of this. Yeah, and it sure. was the perfect storm of coming off of months and months of not being home. Then this other guy like, Hey, I want to come to like the Connecticut area. Yeah. My wife's family's from fair. I'm like, you know what? Congratulations. Yeah, take it. Take my sure. fucking job. I don't Thank want it anymore. God. So I, I, so I worked regionally for a while okay. as I kind of you know, like transitioned out of that business. And then, um, Got, you know, I grew up in Manchester, Connecticut, and not too far from here. Yep. Um, and Hartford's kind of like the insurance filing cabinet of the world, right? 100%. So <laughs> I, I, I put a resume together and started knocking on a bunch of doors. And I was like, if I want something sustainable, um, where could I work? What could I do? And I started going to like all the insurance companies, all the investment companies. Did a brief stint at the post office, which is hilarious. Really? And my, my old man um, is uh, is now retired, but he was a mail handler for like okay. 40 something years. So your dad walked around... Well, mail no, so actually even, even more brutal, I think, although that's a, that's a kind of a give and take, I guess, like the whole industry, like that whole job is, is brutal. Right? So weird. like he was the guy in the Hartford, the Weston street, uh, area, like they have this massive facility. So he'd be driving forklifts around, pushing steel girders, like okay. thousands of pounds worth of stuff full of mail. And, uh, I remember he got like three concussions. Wow. Like my, my old man has had more concussions than Gronkowski, right? Jeez. Because like they had shitty like steel doors with horrible pins on them and he'd be standing under the door and the door would come down and smack him oh. in the head. And I remember getting the call like dad's back in the hospital. He got hit in the head again. I'm like, oh, dude's had his bell rung more times than he could probably remember. Absolutely. Right? And um, so anyway, so I took like a civil service exam because he, or servant exam, whatever they call it. Cause he's like, hey, you should, uh, blue come with career. Me. come work with me. It's great. I did that for a little while. I was like, wow, this is fucking terrible. I don't want to do this. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and really doubled down on, on introducing and, and making those connections. And, uh, I ended, ended up interviewing at the Hartford Okay, and, um, I had long hair, earrings, tattoos. Right. So like I do look right back, in. I wouldn't have hired <laughs> me. I, I, in, in, uh, up until her passing, I used to send the woman who hired me a, a thank you card every year on the anniversary of the day she hired me. You're like, you changed my I life. I was like, you, you. you legitimately saw something in me that nobody else saw because I went on a lot of those interviews. Right. Sure. And, and my whole thing was like, as a musician and a marketer and what I know about adult learning and the brain and that sort of stuff, like I can, I've been selling myself for years, like yep. legally, of course. Right. Sometimes um, legally, sometimes <laughs> legally. There's a couple of times back in college, but there, um, <laughs> different story, different, different totally different story, different podcast. Uh, but <laughs> 
and and got into that world and and learned as much of it as I could. And then it, it all kind of kept going back to the adult learning component of it. It's like, how do human beings make better connections with other human beings? How sure. do we teach people how to be better at what they are? How do we unlock performance and that sort of stuff? But I was like, I really got into, when I get into stuff, and this gets into like the whole journey I'm on now, right? Is like, and I've probably asked you a million questions while we're working out. Yeah. Because when I get into something, I get into it. You right? don't ask more like, questions than Evan does. So don't worry. That's true. I've been around. I have been around around but see but much like what he and, and it's so i'm kind of in between you know like where he goes down and like i need to know everything right sure I, i'm getting to that point right now so <laughs> i was like if i'm gonna stick around in this business i want to learn every aspect of it um and i want to be like dangerous in the sense that like i want to be the guy who knows how money makes money and sure. how it works in the retirement space and how it works in the individual space whatever so I did that for a while and ran learning and development and, and ran sales teams and created a ton of content, wrote a couple of books. Um, and, do you want to plug really any focused. of those books? Not really. I mean, if anybody's <laughs> listening and they want to buy them, Look you, you go on Amazon, put my name in, uh, and, and they'll pop up. But uh, Or if you're listening and you're a member of the gym, just fucking tap me on the shoulder and I'll be happy to give you one. But, cool. um, and, uh, and really just you know kind of built up that um, the expertise there and and – and then got an opportunity to really start a program around coaching and professional development and business building. And the one thing my wife all will always joke about is, um, you know, I get paid a good sum of money to go in and tell people they're doing things wrong. Like I get to be the V eight moment. Like I slap you in the forehead sure. and like, Hey Rome, you're running your You're, business like a dickhead, yeah. you know, like, so, so that, which I needed to, <laughs> which, which, which you totally do. But, uh, no, but that, so that's been a lot of fun and I get to coach people and going back to last year in, in that, you know, I don't believe in a lot of like the, you know, it's meant to be and they push sure. people in whatever, but like, I was at a point in my life where to your point, I met my, like watching my favorite band on the roof deck at Fenway park, open bar, yeah. food everywhere. And I was miserable. Mm. And you walk, you and Kate walk around the corner. You're like, Hey man, yeah, right. I haven't seen you in like seven years. And I was <laughs> like, dude, what the, why is he here? Like, <laughs> what, wait a second though. But he can, and I remember I was like, Hey man, you know, I'm doing this, that and the other thing. And you and you said to me, and you, and you probably don't remember this. You're like, I'm like, yeah, I'm dealing with all this stress and whatever. You're like, I can help swing by the gym. Sure. Let's have a conversation. And I was like, all right. That makes sense, actually. Um, so much like I go into business owners and say, look, if you're at X number of revenue and you want to grow you know, by 10%, 20%, if you have a team that's dysfunctional, if you all don't know how to talk to each other, like there's a number of tools and things I can use to help fix and grow businesses. Yeah. Different dynamics, family dynamics, generational dynamics, you name it, right? But like people hire me as a coach to get better. Yep. I was like, I need a coach. I need somebody that's going to hold me accountable. Because yep. the account... like. When I think of coaching, I think of it from three levels. The, if you think of it like a pyramid, like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the base level is identification. Sure. So if you're a coach, if Evan and I come to you as a coach and we say like, hey man, I got a problem, I'm fat, I'm overweight, and I, I can't make it up the stairs without huffing and puffing. Yeah, you, you're out of shape. Like there's the sure. identification yep. part of it, right? Identify like, the problem. Most people do that on their own. Sure. Right. So that's not really a coachable moment, but for some people, they don't, they haven't identified what the problem is. So yeah. you come in and tell me like, Hey man, I want to grow revenue at the gym by 10% next year. All right, let's talk about what's in your way, blah, blah, blah. The second level of that after we've identified is really from a coach's level to provide perspective, sure. right? So it's the reason why Phil Jackson won all those championships as a coach, but was arguably a sixth man at best when he was in the NBA with bad knees, right? Sure. Just because he couldn't execute on the court doesn't mean that he can't see the game unfolding around him. And you partner him with like an MJ or Kobe or any of those guys, and he can unlock that talent. So most coaches will stop at that second level because they get paid a buttload of money to provide that perspective. Yeah. The third lev level where I try to focus most is the transformation. Okay. So like if I can give you the tools and the resources and then at literally pull you and your team through yeah. what you need to do to be better and hold you accountable and give you that guidance and make sure that you're actually doing it that's like the pinnacle of coaching, that's right? Awesome. So I do that professionally, which is amazing. And then at the same time, I'm like the shoemaker's kids, right? So sure. I'm like, I'm sitting at home, completely out of shape, stressed out, totally freaking out, like medicating myself with booze yep. and, and like, all right, you know, I, 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 I got to figure something out. Like, what am I going to do? Well, I'm gonna hire a freaking coach, right? Oh, Somebody's going to yeah. hold me accountable and give me the process. So, um, 
Yeah, so in a way, I mean, we do the same. We do the same things, yeah, just, just yeah. in different industries, right? And I joke. I mean, it's not a joke. It's a it's a real thing. Every coach needs a coach. I have a coach for the fitness side of my life. I have a coach for the business side of my life. Um, and I, I have a coaching coach also that helps me be better at being a coach. Um, and you have a coach who coaches your coach who coaches you. Okay? Yeah, they all, you know. Forever. But I mean, it's all that mentoring stuff. Of you find mentors, people that are really good at what they do, and you learn from them, and you yeah. pick up what you're going to pick up, and you implement it. And then the cool part with what you do and what I do is we get to hold people accountable. And we're like, hey, you said your goal was X, Y, and Z, and we said to accomplish this goal, we need to do this list of things. Right. Where the fuck are you at? Well, and I think that's one of the things that's like, you know, that just listening to you guys and then I think even from my own personal experience, whether with like fitness or health or life in general, um, there's uh, there's this Einstein quote, which was that uh, no problem can be solved from the same consciousness that created it. And I feel like as a very much like figure things out and accomplish them kind of person, like to get into things, like to feel like I'm good at things. I feel like for a long time, and I still struggle with it, but I had this tendency to think that like, if I know what I need to know about something, then like I can solve this, execute it well, do whatever else. But I think at a certain point, coming to the realization that like, while that's true to a degree, like a lot of the times these holes that I end up finding myself in, whether it's business wise, fitness wise, whatever else, like I could do the research, but there's a certain value in involving another consciousness, whether or not that person is even like more of an expert than you are. They just have the ability to look at you and go like, what do you want? What are you trying to do? What are you doing now? And go like, those things don't line up, you know? And whereas we have our tendency to justify for ourselves and go, you know, whatever, like I, I have examples of this or, you know, it could be something in the gym where you're like, we really want to focus on this. And it's like, well, how's that happening? You know, like, are you doing that or are we doing other things? And uh, that shows up for me in work. It shows up for me in my training. And, and there's like a certain point where, you know, I don't know, I've been doing a lot of like jerk practice, trying to rehab a shoulder injury and get ready for misfit toys. And it's like, I could sit here and just watch YouTube videos all day and do what I think seems to be like address what I think is my problem. Mm -hmm. Or I can go to you and I can go, Hey, what do I like? What am I doing wrong? What do I need to be doing differently? And I think that just involvement of other people that's like, you may be really good and be able to give someone else perspective, but maybe sure. even on what you're an expert at, you still need someone else's perspective 100%. to really address it in your own life. I completely agree. Yeah. So and, back and, and there's a, there's a component of that too shameless plug for just the community that we have here. And obviously the majority of folks are probably will be listening to this, but like even from a coach's perspective, that's great. But I can't tell you how many times I've been in here just like during an open gym and like Tim or somebody walked yep. by. I'm like, Hey man, you open for a, an idea. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. What am I doing? They're like, Hey, can you watch this for me? They're like, sure. yeah, it looked great, but maybe don't drop your shirt. And they're like, all right, sweet. So that's good. like there's a, there's a professional coach component to it, to your point of like helping you think about things and work through things, but then you have other folks and granted you're, there's always additional coach, like yeah, Osher, of course. Matt, or somebody running around. Yep. So, um, yeah, that's, that makes a big difference in focusing on the function and what you need to be like that quick hit. Yep. Um, you know, in my business, we call that drive by coaching. We're okay. Like, well, drive by coaching doesn't work with billion dollar businesses. No, it doesn't. But you know what it does work with the guy who's out here on the floor trying to make sure he doesn't blow his damn back. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the biggest thing with what I do coaching wise, the drive by coaching of a safety is first. If yeah. I see yeah. you doing something in this gym that you're not in the right position, I'm going to tell you yeah. like just straight out. I mean, there's a million ways to do different things, but there's also an, a wrong way and a right way in terms of unsafe and safe. Yeah. There's a bunch of safe ways to do it in different variations, but it's un, unsafe way is the wrong way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's that drive by coaching where I'm like, Hey, don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. But, um, you know, it's interesting too, just to what you were saying about like getting to that point of like, you know, I'm sort of over this and burnt out and miserable. Like I definitely empathize with that. Um, it's, uh, there's this, uh, there's a Jim Carrey quote. I think it is about that. That's like, I wish everyone could be rich and famous so they could realize it's not the answer. Yeah, sure. Um, but I feel like there's definitely some of that, like in coming back to the whole coaching thing for myself and sort of my moment with that of being like, burnt out 260 pounds still wasn't happy had more money than i knew what to do with at the time and just like was miserable and having to like really take a step back and be like okay obviously i'm like good at this because i'm i've gotten good enough to it that it's like overrun everything else and tried to eat me in the process but like i need some other perspective to help me work through like what do i really care about 
like not just what am I good at and what can I follow to the end of this road, but like, okay, I care about my health. Maybe I don't care about being a pro football player, but I care about my health. I care about my relationships. I care about, you know, being able to like do what I do at a high level or do something at a high level, but I don't want to like sell my soul on all these other sure. things for it yeah. and needing help because I think a lot of the times otherwise it's like, maybe we are really good at something and it's like, you just can get down that rabbit hole and you get so deep into it that you're like, you know, for me, it's like, I'm working on Apple commercials. I'm traveling all the time and doing whatever, but like, I'm just slowly losing perspective on all these other things. And in the same way, you know, I find that even just from a fitness level, sometimes it's like, okay, like let's, let's get, let's refocus, let's reassess sort of where are we at? What are our benchmarks we're looking at? Like what are, what's important right now, whether that's body comp wise, whether that's strength wise, whether that's movement patterns, whether that's metabolic conditioning, like any of these sure. things, let's reassess that and make sure that we haven't lost the plot yeah, here. Cause there's a certain point that we can just go way down this. And there's another point where like I can be too scattered all the time and not get anything done. Sure. And so that's even like I was busting late in this morning because he didn't row. I mean, he was like, oh, I had to do barbell club today and i'm trying to be strict about that and i was like as much as i love busting you i'm sure. glad that you are committing to something sure like that's and and because i think Leighton and i both struggle with the like big guys who like to be strong but like to sure. be endurance athletes too sort of thing and it's like to have someone even call you out on like look if you care you you have to pick one of these things to care about more right now and you have to like align your training to that or you're not going to get a lot of anywhere and i feel like for me you know again even coming back to work and stuff it's like i had to dial work back to like put my like health and real life and everything yeah, yeah. into where it needed to be. And then yeah. I could spool them back up together a little bit. And I had to like pull my like strength Metcon stuff down over the summer to do a lot of like body comp endurance stuff, triathlon stuff. And then now came into October and hit a bunch of strength PRs. And it's like, awesome. sometimes it's okay to dial one back and dial one up and sort of like, make sure you just have other people checking you and balancing you and like making sure you're moving in the overall direction you want to be. And staying healthy. I would say staying healthy and working yeah. around injuries and stuff. Like with your elbow, um, asking me or asking Jill or asking Tim or with Jay with his knee, hey, we're still working out. We're still moving. You can yeah. walk for like a month, but we're still doing <laughs> shit. Um, you're still losing weight. You're still getting to your goals. You're still getting yeah. healthier. We're still battling a lot of that mental anxiety that you were referring to before yeah. where yeah. hopefully you're still not self-medicating because you're still getting in the gym even if your knee doesn't I, work. I'm we're not. Still getting and, in the gym. And, that, and that overcoming that, you know, so it's funny because when I listen to Evan, when you're talking about these things too, it's like, I believe, so I'm again, I'm, a, I'm the guy out, guy out there coaching. It's like, you need the principle of balance, the principle of consistency, the discipline, right? Sure. So it's like Leighton has that discipline of like, dude, I'm doing barbell club and I'm taking this seriously. So I'm not going to row and shoot myself in the foot sure, and then blow that up and then be a David. Right. So like when I first started coming and working out with you, like, so I'll say post-surgery at the end of last year yep. coming in like January, February, like, all right, man, I can finally get at this. Right. There was that mental roadblock. And I think uh, like David Goggins has gotten a lot of publicity in recent years for being the guy of like, your limits are bullshit and it's all whatever. Absolutely. And like, this is the crazy ass that had a pulmonary embolism and decided to go out and run another 200 miles down a mountain. Yeah, right? So like, nuts. I'm not, I'm not that hardcore. Right. But there were times where I was like, man, I'm going to die under the bar. Like my heart's going to explode. <laughs> I haven't done this kind of exercise. So you have to like push through that. And by the way, nothing I was doing was super intense, but yeah. to my body, it was I because I was like, relative, I, right? everything's relative. Right. So it was like, when I think of what we did today, I would have taken 50 breaks sure. earlier this year. To do it, right. Like I'd probably still be out there. So and movement quality that now you can move without injuring yourself for the most part. Yeah. I can uh, drop it like it's hot without blowing there we out go. That's it. <laughs> so long as I don't do it 15 days in a row. Yeah. yeah exactly. Um, so apparently that's my limit. So like that's <laughs> not a mental that. limitation. We found the physical limitation. Next October, maybe we'll get to 20 days. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or, <laughs> or, maybe, or, maybe, or maybe we just won't do it. Or maybe, maybe we just won't do it. That's what my Three wife, days a week. my wife's like, uh, I saw you liking the dead December thing. Are you gonna? I'm like, if I blow out my back, I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah. So like, one leg. I'll follow no the back. programming. You know, I will. Maybe we'll work that in. But like, no, not every day. Don't want to put the dead in dead December. Yeah, no, that would be a bad idea. Where's my Where's my button? Is there it is. One? Hey, hey <laughs> got it in there. We snuck got the soundboard in, in Boom. once. So, uh, and then I guess just real quick, if, if you don't mind sharing, like just with your sort of like recent fitness turnaround that you've talked about where like you decided to come back into the gym and whatever, mm -hmm. what was sort of like, 
whatever metrics you would use for like peak unhealthy to like where you're headed? Like, how's that been going so far? Yeah. So, I mean, I think transparency is, is a key to accountability. So when I first came in, uh, about a year ago, I was 303, 304, mm-hmm. like I was 306, mate. We'll say 306. I don't have your book it, around here, but I can tell it, you. It, it sound, I mean, I just remember, I was like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> like, what did that what the? I'm like, you know, and I'm 6'2", almost 6'3". Yeah. So yeah, you're a big dude. I mean, and I'm sexy as fuck, but like <laughs> I, I, I wear it well, but I was like, man, this is a, you know, this is a, when people are like, hey, big guy, I'm like, they're not referring to my height. Yeah. Um, and uh, when I did the weigh-in at the end of the Cut the Junk Challenge, I was 266. Nice. Awesome. So, which is pretty awesome. And my neck's gone down a couple of inches. My chest has gone from a, I was wearing a 52, 54 suit to wearing a 46. Wow. So like when I think of the measurements of success, yes, there's a weight measurement there, sure. right? It's like, you know, when I was 197 or something, when I was like, I look like I was emaciated and yep. I was wearing yeah. a, a schmedium t-shirt, you know, when I was doing Weight Watchers or whatever. It's like, could I break 200 again? Sure. But like we've talked about, is that that's not the end game, right? right. So like you gotta I want enjoy the journey. I want to enjoy the journey. I want energy. I want to be around for my kids. I want cardiovascular health. Um, I want that functional fitness, right? So like I want to be able to do what I'm doing. I want to be sure. able to go on the road for three days and not have a panic attack because my body feels like it's Absolutely. breaking down. And every time I, you know, like I was joking with you the other day, I was like, or yesterday traveling and, and I walk in and a woman shakes my hand and she's like, I'm going downstairs to get cough syrup. I've had this horrible cold for three weeks. I'm like, then why'd you shake my hand? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so then like you get all these mental things that happen in it. And I was like, I feel like I'm getting a cold because my chest is tight. I was like, no, I got a, my, my chest is tight because I blew the crap out of my pecs on Monday afternoon, getting you know, fucking Jack, getting yeah. fucking jacked, <laughs> getting swole, bro. You know? So like, it's it's a mental reframe of all those things. So my markers are really like, yes, I would love to be in like the single digit 200, like sure. 200, 205, 210, whatever. But like, I'm going to get to a point where, and I'm already feeling that. I love seeing people I haven't seen. I was telling Rome, like we did a um, pre-Thanksgiving thing with, with some of my extended family um, over the weekend. And my wife's uncle was like, I didn't recognize, I was wondering who was talking to Libby. It was my wife. Yeah. Um, when we walked in and I was like, what? He's like, well, I've, and I was like, oh, you haven't seen me in like a year. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. To me, I don't notice it because sure. I, it's you. Cause it's me, you know, yeah. like, but other people come up to me or people at work, they're like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm like, here's the number. Here's the name of the place. You know, like, yeah. like <laughs> come, promote come on, shit like come and you know, promote the, <laughs> Here, promote the crap t-shirt. out of it. Here, I need um, a free half month. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So, uh, so that makes you feel really good about it. And that yeah. then fuels the, the intensity to keep it going. And, and when we sat, when Roman and I sat down and talked about it, he was like, and I think you were very transparent. You're like, dude. It, and I say this to, to coach people I coach all the time. I'm like, you didn't get this way overnight. You're not going to fix it overnight. Right. So very realistic in that, like, this is likely a two year ish, maybe longer journey sure. to get from where you are today to where you want to be. And you're going to see peaks and valleys. So I try not to also spend too much time paying attention to what the number is on a scale, because what I've realized is even when you're doing cut the junk or I was like, I went, I'd get on a scale and I'm like, yeah, I'm down two pounds today. And then I get down the next day and there was a funny meme of like a dog taking a crap. And it was like, you know, can't wait to weigh myself after this. You know, I felt like that. Yeah. I was like, I'm like, I'm not going to weigh myself till I, I can't eat until I've had my coffee and I have my morning constitution. <laughs> oh, I totally do that. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Take my coffee, wait after all that happens. Like now I can weigh myself. Whoop. Just comes flying out of you. So, um, <laughs> but then I'd, I'd hit these peaks and valleys and I stopped looking at the scale because sure. I was like, all right, my clothes are fitting better. Yeah. My energy is increasing. I'm finding I'm like less anxious, less yeah. worried, less, you know, I don't let my mind roam. I'm thinking clearer. Some of my clients even are like, dude, where are these ideas coming from? Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm like, I got up this morning. I worked fire. out. I had, you know, two cups of coffee and I am like, I'm rocking. Like, I'm ready awesome to rock feeling. and roll. You know, and it is an awesome feeling. And that I didn't have that feeling before. Yeah. So that those are the, like when you got it, like you're in front of me, I'm in front of a computer and you're like, I'm smashing this right now. Like that's a great feeling. You're just dialed yeah. in, yeah. And that's and, and and that's a perfect way to frame it. Like so, I just want to feel like I'm dialed in. Like I've optimized my brain, my body. Um, you know, the biggest thing that we haven't talked about, which I believe has been a game changer for me, aside from the nutrition and the and the and the um, fitness component, has been sleep. Sure. Like I oh, never yeah. focused on. I was a guy. I was like, I'm a fucking badass. Like, I can I sleep. sleep for three hours, you know. And I have friends that do that. And they're sure. like, Dude, I can go to bed at three in the morning, wake up at six, and be at a conference, you know. And I'm like, Okay, for how long? <laughs> have fun with yeah. your Alzheimer's. For, for how long? <laughs> That's actually a big part of that. Yeah, yeah it, exactly. So, like, you know, in in working with my primary physician, and he's like, 
hey, let's do a sleep study. Like maybe you have sleep apnea, maybe sure. you have this, maybe you have that. And it's like, you know, finding all the tools and having that knowledge to say, okay, this is what I need to do to get better, to be able to sleep better and to, and to fix some of these things. And, uh, and focusing on that, like waking up, feeling refreshed, you know, yeah, dude. having some movement, having something to look forward to eating good quality food, like all of that has made a massive difference. So I'm, I'm living in the success. Like if you told me back in February that I'd be sitting here recording this podcast, Jammed dropping 40 this. pounds, you know, whatever, you like where it's 309 front, to 260. So we're talking more like, uh, 50 pounds. We're getting close to 50. Yeah. 50 and, yeah. and, and, you know, and, and, and great. We'll keep going and we'll keep moving it, it further down in the other direction. But I think the, I feel like I'm already living through the good parts of it. Yeah. Um, which is awesome. And it's just going to continue to get better. And hopefully you're enjoying the journey as you continue training and you're part of our community and you're doing cool shit like that, where it's not just like, I'm so dialed in on the end of it. I can't wait to get there. We're like, this is great. Yeah. Things yeah. are good. No, it's, it's definitely, um, it's definitely, I'm enjoying the hell out of the journey, which is fun. I'm learning my limitations, uh, yeah. which is also helpful. Like yeah. this morning, I, there was a big part of me yesterday. It was like, I got to get up and get in there at four 30. But knowing that I messed up my knee, knowing that if I got on the bike and tried to sit next to Evan on one of the assault bikes and ru- and ride sure. at 13 miles, like I wouldn't walk for a week. Yeah, you know? Thanksgiving would so have So I was sucked. like, I'm like, eh, all right, maybe that's not it. And Playing Misfit, the long game. And, and Misfit Toys, like I'll come and I'll help, I'll work, you know, I'll judge yep. and whatever. Eat some bears. Eat some, yeah, eat some bears barbecue. Bears is on me that day for all the ha- the sta- help and the staff. Oh, in that so case, me. I need to help. Like, <laughs> Can you pull my registration up? Yeah, I'll yeah. film in between events and uh, <laughs> you, yeah, I'll get some barbecue. <laughs> You're in. That's that's amazing. So like, uh, you know, that sort of stuff. So yeah, being a part of it, enjoying the journey, getting to meet people and, and having, I mean, how many times have Evan, have you and I sat around like, my, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to work out at noon. I come home at like three and my wife's like, what the hell have you been doing? Yeah. It was like, oh, yeah, Evan was there. Sorry. Hanging out, like talking yeah. to Evan or hanging out, talking to Yosh or whatever. Like it's, it is, it's, it's, um, when, you know, it's the, it's the community aspect of it. Right. And that's where some people, will joke about like, Oh, it's like a cult. You guys all hang out. Yeah. Because you're like, it's, it's it. And I'll go back to that and without getting too, you know, nerdy and scientific, but it's that apex of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's a self-actualization. Sure. You want to be around other individuals who share the same goals, have the same principles or at the same point in their life. And we're all at different points in our lives. When I think about the people that work out here or that I've met and that we've done comp like the rowing competition, whatever, even folks from other gyms that come in and it's like everybody just gets along and hangs out because even though we're at different points in our lives, yep. we're all focused on the same goal and the same habits and yeah. creating those habits and, and endorsing and, and amplifying those through a community, which is really, really cool to be a part of. And a lot of, a lot of uh, similar mentalities, you know, type driven people, driven individuals where mm-hmm. you could be a father of three, father of four. You could be just getting out of college. You could be in high school. I trained a kid yesterday that was like 13, just helping him move better. Yeah. But um, we all got that goal, as you're saying. We're all working towards something, so let's get together and do it. Yeah. yeah. I remember bringing uh, my oldest, you've met Daly a million yep. times, in here to row one day when I was, you know, I was like, she's a competitive rower. So I was like, oh, just come in and jump on an Eric. She had the day off. And, uh, it was so funny watching like her come in as the awkward because we're all sure. awkward. At yeah, your first I day mean, we walk in, you're like, I mean, it's a little intimidating. We walk in, you're like, what is? This? Yeah, I mean, I'm still awkward in my 40s, but like she, she, <laughs> she's looking around. She's like, what the hell? And by like 15 minutes into it, we're in the middle of a workout, and she's like hanging around talking to everybody. And I was it's like, awesome. Holy shit, this is amazing. You know, and like, that's what it's all about to be able to have you. You, know, I think back to. One, as a musician, if I had YouTube when I was her age, like sure. yeah. this kid, she got the musical gene from me, thankfully, right? Cool. Like she got the looks from her mom. She got the music from me. Um, so she's set, right? So <laughs> golden. Uh, the other two are, you know, are still a work in progress, but <laughs> she'll like sit down with an iPad and, and learn songs on a piano. We just bought a, an acoustic piano, right? Which so, is amazing. So, which is amazing. And I'm like, fuck, man, if I had that when I was your age, I'd be in like... Carnegie Hall every night. Where you're not yeah. going to the music store and buying like sheet music. You're like, I want to learn blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Better go to the store and buy some sheet music to learn how to play this. But but at the same time, you know, when I think back to if my parents took me to a gym when I was that age, or if I was around, uh, you know, people who had a fitness or a health mindset, yep. it would have drastically changed, you know, because I said to you too, I'm like, you know, I just don't know what I don't know. So when it comes down to like nutrition, 
I, we just never focused on that yeah. as a family, right? So, like, when I bring my kids in here, or they come to the com- the competitions, or yeah. like the charity rows, or whatever, you know, Daly's going to volunteer at the Misfit Toys Throwdown, so she's going to be here for the four or five hours, or however long we're here, and being around that, like, just being a part of that community installs a lot of those like core principles and the good habits that 100%. I'm trying to build. Because as a father, what I don't want which would be the worst thing ever as a coach, especially right. Is to have my kids grow up with the same shitty habits or lack of habits that I had. So how can I expose them to these things in a way that like starts to build on those habits and those disciplines at an early age and having fitness be fun. You know, right. like, so she comes in here and it's not a chore. It's not, right. people are laughing. They're joking around. They're getting along. And it's something that people want to do. It's not like PE class where you're like, Oh, I got a PE class today. I got to get changed. They're going to make me play volleyball. I hate volleyball. Yeah. Um, right. Right. Where it's like, Hey, people want to be here. People pay a lot of money to be here. Like this is stuff that people want to do. And that's what I, I enjoy myself having my kids come in here. Cause there's a lot of really positive role models for them where they see that and they see, People lifting up weights and especially for my daughter, seeing women lift up heavy weights and doing cool stuff where like she's going to be 100% like completely ingrained that I hope when she meets a boy, she's way stronger than that dude (laughs) and being like, let's go. Um, She will be. But I mean, that's, that's the idea of um, what we do here, the whole aspect of the community. Um, I mean, if, if, when you have the chance and you listen to our first podcast, you'll hear my story. I was fortunate enough to be in gyms when I was little. Um, and that's where my aspects come from of living and breathing and eating fitness and sports and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I think there's a huge importance to that. And I think it's really cool. And I encourage everyone to bring their kids into the gym, bring them in, have them watch you, have them swing around on a, a, a bar or have them on the rope or whatever it may be. Cause that's awesome. Well, and, and there's, I enjoy having your kids here too. Uh, you like, there's times where I I'll finish like a set of something and I'm like totally fucking gassed and Keegan will run up and like, <laughs> like pretend he's going to, you know, like run into me and then run away and wait for me to chase him. And I was like, I'm like, Oh man, this is awesome. You know, cause my kids are older than your kids. Yeah. So I think back to when they were two, three years old, you know, like that sort of stuff and chasing them around. So it's, it's fun to, and then just come in and see other people bring the, have their kids. Yeah. It is a more of a family base. And you know, the, I was having this conversation. I was telling you this earlier a guy that I work with who is motivated and wants to run a marathon. And he's like, oh shit, I got to get out and run, but I got this going on. I got that going on. So for the last like six months, we will text each other photos yep. of, and I sent him a picture today. It was like, and it just literally, it was of the bar with the weights on it, you know, sit in the rack. And I just said, get some. Sure. And then he's like, you son of a bitch. You know? and, then, and then he <laughs> sends me a picture of him, like, you know, post run, like covered in sweat with like his activity from his Apple watch. Um, which is amazing. So you think of like that community vibe that you're building and trying to get these folks, you know, motivated and to, to have that at a family level and to have that here and to, and to have other individuals that you, you know, spend time with in here to make it fun. Yeah. And I love that it's spreading, it's it's spreading spreading. to your friends too, where it's like, they don't have anything to do with the gym, but because they're connected to you, it's spreading to them now as well. Well, and the point in that rant that I got somewhat sidetracked on was you just put, you put a post out yesterday while I was traveling with him. It was like, you know, what is 1% of your day, you know, or, uh, what was it? One hour is 4% yeah, of your day, right? Something like that. And he was like, Oh, I don't know if I'm going to get to work out and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, dude, how much time do you spend devoted to you? Like he doesn't have any kids. It's him and his wife. Right. And I'm not saying that that's not challenging enough. He's got a challenging career. And he's like, I don't know, like, you know, 10%, 20% of my day. I was like, all right, dude. So what does that equate to in the number of hours? So if you're telling me you don't have time to go for a run, like, uh, what do you run like a uh, fucking 27 minute mile? Like y- you can, you can get a couple Absolutely. miles in, in an hour. Right. And he's like, yeah, I'm like, that's 4% of your day, bro. He's like, God damn it. You and your logic. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> um, but you have to, you have to think through that. Or I yeah. get questions sometimes. Cause I, again, with an accountability, we using the Apple watch. I have people I work with some of my guys on my team, just my friends, family, whatever. So they get the little notifications that pop. Yep. And I get a buddy of mine that will call me and he's like, Oh, I wish I had time to work out in the middle of the day. I'm like, you do. Sure. Like I busted my ass from 6 a.m. to 11:30. Got in here at noon. Just took an recreate hour. Recreate your schedule. You know. Yeah. So I, le- I legitimately will time block at least two days a week. Yeah. So I know, like, okay, I'm in my home office. I'm not traveling. I have an hour plus the 15 minutes on each end it takes me to get here. It's an hour and a half. I go in, I, I crush it, I go home, I grab something to eat, and I jump back on a call or do what I need to do. Like, and you hopefully have you're to more make productive that time. and feel better, and you, you made some time for yourself that day. Um, yeah, absolutely. that actually might be a good uh, spot to end on. Of can you give me four percent of your day every day? Can you give me one hour? Yeah, I think you can. I think you can. 
Because right. what else are you going to do with that hour? I mean, the same people that will say, I get this all the time from business owners' perspective. Oh, I wish we had time to spend on marketing. I'm like, let's take a look at where you're spending your time. Let's sure. take a look at where your team's spending your time. And you're telling me you don't have time to work out. You don't have an hour in your day. It's because you spend an hour mindlessly like using your phone, scrolling at Instagram, bullshit. scrolling Instagram, and 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 you know liking stuff or you know like oh like oh uh, um, my favorite thing is I think multitasking is bullshit unless sure. it's physical and mental. Okay. So they're like, oh, you know, I got to consume this content or I'm studying for an exam. I'm like, okay, do you listen to like Audible? Do you listen to, do you download podcasts or digital versions of training materials? They're like, absolutely. I'm like, then get you, get your butt on a treadmill, sure. get you on a bike, go to the gym, put some AirPods in, earbuds, whatever the hell, and, and listen to that content while you're working out. Because you can do a physical and a mental at the same time. Yeah. You can't do two physical things at the same time well. You can do both of them half assed sure. And the same thing with mental. But like, how do you devote that one? And it's one hour, dude. Yeah. Like, if you can't find an hour throughout every day to focus on yourself – resetting your brain, yep. getting in, getting some activity, whatever it is, like then I would question what the hell are you doing? Like, and if that you... hour trickles out to everything else we talked about. That hour trickles out to sleep quality. That hour trickles out to food quality, food decisions, life decisions. I mean, that one hour isn't just limit. The effects of that hour affect the next what? You said it's 4%, so the next 96% of that day yeah. is affected by that out everything and that's your point like it's sleep and everything else like we worked out and i left in between recording this podcast to go get a coffee and dude if i hadn't worked out today with like and and, and built on those habits i drove by five guys i was like oh man. yeah i can smell those fries bro you i know? do love like, five guys dude, yeah. we just talked about metabolic flexibility yeah yeah, yeah. well <laughs> so, and i think i think part of what all this comes back to too though is just that whole like what do you actually want? Like, if you're going to sit here and, you know, to what you're saying, like, you text me and be like, oh, I wish I had time for that. It's like, well, what are you doing to actually actualize you wanting that? Like, you're telling me you wish you could do that, but what are you actually doing about it? Because right. it's easy to say that. Like, oh, I wish I had time to work out. I wish I had time to do whatever. Like, and there's a, a, a million examples of ways that you can do something about that. And I think that was part of the thing, you know, for me was like, okay, if you say you want your health at some degree, then like you're going to have to make some sort of an exchange. You can't just status quo everything and expect yeah. some sort of unusual outcome. Yeah. But it's like even stupid little stuff. Like I've been, I took a uh, social media off my phone for November and it's like, dude, you want to free up a few hours over the course of a day pretty quickly. It's like, do you care about whatever falls through your feed more than you care about your ability to even just go for a walk outside your house or your job at some point? Because right. at the end of the day, that's a really easy trade off for most people to make. It's yeah. like delete the gram, move for 30 minutes a day. Like there's little stuff you can do. And it's like, if you really care about that, don't look at everyone else and be like, oh, I wish I could afford CrossFit. I wish I had time to, you know, train for a marathon. Yeah. I wish I could do something about my diet. And it's like, well, do you really care? You could get a cheaper phone plan and free up yeah. food money to eat better. You can stop like, eating out. Yeah. Stop you can spending do so money many on spending shit. stupid money on bullshit. And, Cut and, the and, drinking. You know, drinking yeah. costs money and takes time. Like there's all these different things. And it's like, People are your decisions like reflecting that. your priorities? Because if yeah. they're not, you can't be surprised when this is what you get. Like, and to, to both of our predicaments, you probably got a lot of money, not a lot of people who liked you. Uh, you're miserable and unhealthy and don't know what to do with yourself. And it's like, well, what were your decisions that led there? You prioritized making money above everything else. You didn't care about your health and uh, you didn't spend any time investing in yourself or people. That's the outcome that comes out sure. of that. Like, it's, no shockers there. It's, it's, and it's, and it's one, you know, we run dangerously close to this thing running massively over, but, you know, there's, um, the, the Japanese have done a lot of things amazing. You know, they've done process reengineering, whatever, and I'll butcher it, but they call it the reason. And there's a Japanese word for it. I think it's a Kai, 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 or a Kai, whatever it is. I got no idea. So it's basically like a, a Venn diagram. Um, and I have it on my phone, which doesn't do anything for the people who are listening, but, um, I think it's I K A I G I is how you pronounce it. Is how you spell Yosh. it. And you know, we'll ask him, where's Yosh? Where's our, yeah, right. where's our resident expert? <laughs> um, but it's all around like, okay, what are you good at? And what do you have a passion? Like, what are you good at that, uh, you know, can pay you? What are you good at that, you know, could be more of like a, uh, like a hobby? Sure. What does the world need? Right. And that sort of stuff. So then you start to bring these Venn diagrams together. And what you end up doing is you go through multiple levels and at the center of it, where all these things overlap, it's your actual reason or your purpose. Cool. 
right? So it's like in, in going through that exercise and coaching people through that, when I draw them through that, it's to, to the points of like, where are you spending your time? How, how could you get an hour, two hours back? How could you get $25 a month? How could you get a hundred dollars sure. a month? You know, there's so many things of like, okay, where, and then inside of those bubbles, it's like, here's what you should do for, you know, like, this is a vacation world. This is like a, a hobby. This is that, this is that, um, like how do all those worlds intersect and how do you take a step back at the end of the day and reorient to like, what is really important yep. and you will find a way, absolutely. right. You know, like personal training is not inexpensive, no, right. Absolutely. But when I think of the amount of money that I pay outwardly to, to, to work with you on an sure. annual basis, um, like, I'm also saving that on the back end by not going to the fucking doctor once a month thinking sure. I'm dying. I'm not going to the ER thinking you're in a panic attack. I'm not like all the things and like, yeah, it costs more money to buy high quality foods, but like it take cost me more money to continuously feed myself through caffeine to keep myself upright and get past the three o'clock dose and whatever. So if you did a cost benefit analysis on to your point, Evan, of like finding the money, you could easily find the money to do these things. It's ironic, and you would probably know the stats better than me, but I was reading something recently of like the average person spends five hundred dollars on fitness gear for a ten dollar a month gym that they go to three times that funny. they pay that they pay for a twenty four month commitment and go twice. Yeah. So That's it's like you spent five hundred bucks up front and you know, two hundred and forty dollars over the course of two years to go work out twice and then yeah. you get pissed. They're like, oh, what was me? I didn't get the results. I didn't, I didn't get I, the results. It was a waste of money. But yeah. It was a waste of money. It's like, it was a waste of money. It was and a giant waste of money all the way across. Two back to your point of the uh, cost analysis. How much more productive have you been in the last year? How much more money oh, yeah. have you earned yourself because of that productivity that goes full circle of, um, that's how I justify my caffeine expense. Yeah. That's how, yeah <laughs> no, it's I'm how way just, more productive. It's, yeah, how yeah. I justify, <laughs> it's how you justify a lot of things. And, it's, and it comes back to... You know, like what's the principle? What's the balance? What are you trying to do? And, yep. and and really kind of looking at weighing all those options and where you're getting that energy from. So that's a we could just go down a fucking rabbit hole on this yeah. thing. But that that whole all those principles are interconnected. And I think that the folks that are here that are choosing to be here, that are choosing to spend their time here, that are choosing to like take this seriously as we hear weights getting smashed around the floor behind us while we're recording this, <laughs> um, like get that. Right. Yeah, and, and, but there are unfortunately so many people that I talk to and I, and I feel like, you know, recent studies in neuroscience show it takes seven minutes to reset your brain. So okay. if you're in like a total like shit show PTSD type situation, uh, now what that seven minutes needs to be is different for each person. Sure, like for absolutely. me, it's music, right? Okay. So I can listen intently to music for 10 minutes and listen to all the instruments, whatever. And I can be like, Whoa, all right, I'm good. Like whew, that was my breather. Um, if you're like high dominance, high activity, high energy, that 10 minutes needs to be like moving. Sure. Right. So even like that's the me. 30 that's minutes me a day, right? That's, I, I have to exercise every day. That's how I stay sane. You know, th those sorts of things. And when I have those conversations with people, they're like, oh, you know, like it's just so, it's so, I was having this conversation yesterday with somebody and it was the woe is me. Sure. Right. It, this is an individual to your point where you're talking about having money and whatever this individual, um, if I had to guess, I don't have to guess actually. I know. So I'm doing the calculation in my head. This individual takes in $8 million per year. Wow. Runs a very successful business. Everybody's well taken care of. Everybody is like well paid. They sure. have notoriety, whatever miserable really and and then i'm like well you need to you know like oh how do i do this how do i do that i'm like oh you got to take 10 minutes out of you know the day to do i don't have 10 minutes you don't have 10 minutes 10 minutes yeah 10 i'm not even asking you for an hour man. Like, you use 10, the bathroom 10 minutes you that's know? 10 minutes right there well, uh, but it's hard to it's hard to pull yourself out of that like continuum and yeah. go okay what do i need to do differently right and i think yeah. some of that too can even be like like uh I, I used to have the problem that was like, I had a really hard time saying no to things because if I just looked at it purely from a perspective of like, this is what someone wants to pay me to like go to Chicago for three days. Like I'd be stupid to say no to that. Mm -hmm. But then to me, it's like, again, if you take the perspective of like, say this person, you sort of uh, blend me and this person a little bit together and go like, okay, so would you take $7.5 million a year to not be miserable, you know, like right. would that still be enough? And it's like, well, maybe you can cut the 10 minutes. Like maybe it will actually cost you something, but maybe you won't be miserable and maybe Absolutely. that's okay. You know, like maybe I don't have to make quite as much money as I was making and maybe that money's great and whatever else. But like, maybe if I can say no to things and prioritize these other things and be happy, they'll like, 
however many thousand dollars a year it costs you when you really do all the math is okay. Like I'd still rather be happy and not take the, you know, have the extra fancy car and the extra newest phone and whatever else. But like, I'm not miserable. Like my, my, uh, 11 XS max does not make up for the fact (laughs) that like, I'd rather go to the gym, you know, or whatever else it is. But it's so hard to be like, Oh, I'm busy and successful and I don't want to take time or resources or anything else away from the thing that I feel like I'm already beholden to, so I'm just stuck. And it's like, you're not stuck. You can say mm. no to anything. There's a there's an Alan Watts quote, something about that. I feel like I'm on a quote mode today. But it has something to do with, like, um, basically your past. You don't, like, owe yourself any sort of decision based on the past, basically. And so mm. it's, like, no amount of, like, you having made fat kid choices for the last 10 years means that you can't make a better choice yep. today. And no amount of you working 100 hours you know, every week for the last few weeks means that you can't just be like, I'm just not doing this anymore. Well, I think that, so to, to, I know we've been trying to close for like four hours now, but the, <laughs> to close on a thought, you know, it, exactly what we're talking about. And when I think again about coaching business owners, but they're human beings, right? Yeah. So at the end of the day, I'm kind of walking into your brain and getting a scary more sort of than not look or what's going on there is when you do take the time to step back and to focus on the things that are important and to get some of that energy, <sighs> at least in the, in the folks that I'm coaching, we actually always bring that back to an ROI and show that by doing that, you actually end up making more. Yeah. You can do more. You, can, you have that mental you know, accuracy and capacity to focus on growing a business or to focus on serving and protecting your better clients or to, you know, whatever that yeah. is, right? Or, and also sometimes it will have folks, we'll, we'll, t- we'll talk back and I'm like, okay, so if you make eight, and like, oh, woe is them. They're making $8 million a year, right? Sure. But if somebody that's, you know, slugging through, making an average salary, you know, making, you know, $75,000 a year or $50,000 or whatever. It's like, if you're busting your ass and you're, and you're trying to work, you know, 60, 70, 80 hours a week. And if you were to break that down by an hourly wage of how much you're truly spending, how much your time is worth. Um, like if you were able to take a step back and get some of that mental and physical capacity to then focus on the things that will actually drive you to make, make you more happy to your yep. point, Evan, it's like, is 8 million too much? Like would I take seven if yeah. I could work, you know, cut five hours, hours less or yeah. cut these hours down to 10 hours? Like, and what we find is that when we clear the decks and create some capacity and you focus on the things for which you have a natural passion and energy for, you can actually then deploy that energy and, and deploy those strengths because sure. I'm not in a weakness business, right? Like you help me fix a lot of my sure. weaknesses physically, but like I don't focus on business weaknesses. I focus on deploying strengths. Yeah. And that's the same mentality of like, take a step back, create some more of that positive energy and create some of that capacity. The irony there is for those of you, those folks that may be listening are like, well, shit, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. Taking that time actually makes you that much more productive and can make Absolutely. you more money. Mm-hmm. could give you more of that because it's not all about money. Yeah. Right. To me, it's about being able to be home and spend time with my kids. Yeah. One hundred percent. You know, at the point where they're still kids and then when they're fully grown. I always joke. I'm like, you know, Daly's a couple years away from going to college. I'm like, you're going to be really sad one day when you come back to this house and we don't live here anymore. (laughs) Or you come back and your your room is like mom's paint studio. My wife doesn't even paint, but goddamn, she's going to start to have a studio. She will have a studio for it and you will not be able to sleep there. Um, Like. It, being in that moment is more important to yes. me than making another, you know, fifty thousand dollars or I whatever agree. it is. So I agree. Anyway. Cool. Why don't we try to wrap that up there? Yeah. Cool. Jay, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having Appreciate me, guys. It. This is fun. Absolutely, it was a great time. We'll bring you back on in the future. Awesome. And uh, everybody out there, listen to us next week again. Bye. Bye.